So here we are in After Effects and first we'll click and drag our clip into the new composition tab. Roll the slider to look for the starting point. Hit B at the starting point and N at the ending point. Now right click and choose Trim Com to Work Area. So the first thing we'll be covering is green screen effect or the chroma keying. So the first step will be to delete the unwanted things from the scene. Like here I have my clothes hanging. So just choose pen tool and click and select only the area you need. Nice. Now in the effects tab search for key light. Now using color picker tool click on the green part of the clip. And now in the view choose screen matte. And under the screen matte we'll make white to pure white and the blacks to complete blacks. Nice. Now screen shrink to minus 1 and screen softness to plus 1. Now in the view we'll select status. This will show the status of the clip till now. So as you can see the whites have become pure whites except my t-shirt area. Also let me show you the reason for this. So let's get back to the final result. Turn off the key light effect for the timing. And here it is. This is because I'm wearing a green t-shirt. Why? Huh. So in these type of cases just duplicate the original layer with command D and rename it to t-shirt mask. Hit M and delete the earlier mask and make a new mask around the t-shirt. Great. And you can also apply some feather if you want. Ok so let's now turn on the key light effect of the base layer, I mean the original layer and make some more adjustments to the mask. Let's have a RAM preview so far. I think the screen softens should be around 2. Superb. So our next step is to apply a background to our scene. And I have got some exterior images and the building factory named image will suit better. So let's drag it into the After Effects. Hit Command Shift F for the fit to screen size. Shrink a bit. Also apply the cinema scope for a better look. I have the cinema scope PNG file made in Photoshop. Just need to directly put it onto the scene. Nice. Now as you can see when I scale my layer down this kind of thing happens. So for this I need to take my layer and t-shirt mask layer. Just right click and choose pre-compose and rename it to actor. And now scale it down a bit and make it fit into this screen. And now it's time for my favorite effect. And that is the element 3D effect or the glass breaking effect we are going to do. So we'll just right click new solid black color and rename it to E3D glass and hit enter. Search for the element in the effects tab and here it is. Just drag it onto the E3D layer. Now as you all know we are going to do a glass shutter effect and for that we need to apply some texture to our glass also. So here I have some optical flare textures which come along the Video Copilot's optical flares plugin pack. And there are so many you can choose any one which you want. So here I'm going to use this DAG one and the dodgy one. And let's just drag them into the After Effects project and also bring them into the main composition. And let's turn their visibility off because we don't need them to use directly. We'll use them through Element 3D. So just select E3D glass layer and under custom layers go to custom texture maps. In the layer 1 choose dodgy and in the layer 2 choose DAG. So now we'll go to the scene setup and here under motion design pack we have broken glass models. So as per requirement we are gonna use this broken glass number 2. Very nice model. So under presets we have many materials and we'll use this glass material. And we'll now open the glass material properties in the texture tab. Click on diffuse and here we'll load the texture DAG.png and hit OK. 
and now under the advanced options we have to just lower the force opacity so that we are able to see the glass pieces uh, not too much but i think around 94 yeah nice now click on environment button and choose dodgy.png and hit ok here you can see your glass is now reflective and under the refraction options we lower the intensity a bit and hit ok so here we have our glass in our composition and we need to scale it so that it fits our scene under group 1 particle look and increase the particle size till it fits the screen and here we have this multi object and this is the place where all the magic is to happen so we'll just enable multi object and boom we have got so many properties wow man amazing thanks mr andrew kramer sir we love you the basic things we need for animating this glass are the size the position rotation displace and scatter and let me explain you a bit uh, you can easily understand what size and position means uh, with size you can increase or decrease the object and with the position you can change the object's position but what if you want to create some depth between the particles like you want some particles to be at the front and some particles at behind for this we'll use scatter and to increase or decrease the distance between these particles we'll use displace and for rotating them we'll use rotation randomness so at the first frame we'll apply keyframes to the size rotation randomness displace scatter multi and under particle replicator position z now select e3d glass layer and press u from the keyboard and it will open all the key framed layers and as you can see here we have position size rotation displace and scatter now we'll just go to the last frame of the scene and increase the displace value so that the particles move away from each other nice now we'll increase the scatter value so that we have some depth between these glass particles now we'll increase the rotation randomness so that each particle is uniquely rotated also we'll go back to the first frame select the size and change it to 0 0.7 nice and at the last frame make it 0 0.5 also we need to decrease the position z superb so let's just have a RAM preview so far. Great, very nice. But I think some particles are covering my face. So I need to get rid of this. Uh, so I'll change the position Y a bit. Yeah, it's looking fine now. So here comes the second part of the compositing. Where we'll import some smoke kind of elements from Action Essentials to Pack. So here I have atmospheres uh, and we'll choose this atmosphere 6, drag it into my composition, also make the duplicate of this using command D or control D, just go to layer, transform and flip horizontal and increase its size and also drag this layer to the left so that both of these atmospheres have different timing and different look. So let's just preview this again. Great, we have done perfectly fine till here. So our next step is color grading. So right click new and choose adjustment layer. Check this under the cinema scope layer and look for magic bullet looks. And drag it onto the adjustment layer. Click on edit button and here we have a big collection of different kind of looks. And this time I'll go for this vintage looking sepia tone and hit enter. Perfect. Now right click new camera 50mm and hit OK. Press AA two times from the keyboard and turn on depth of field. Increase the aperture to around 100 and decrease the focus distance uh, to around 1100. Perfectly fine. Now front glass pieces are in focus and the pieces behind are blurred. Nice effect. 
Now the coolest and the final step is time remapping. Here we'll do the fast and slow motion effect. For example, we have this layer here and this is the initial frame and this is the last frame of the scene. Now for example, we have to slow this part of the clip. So we'll just apply two keyframes at the clip's initial and the clip's last point. So to slow it, just increase the distance between them and to fasten it, just decrease the distance between them. So first we'll drag and select all the layers, right click and pre-compose and rename it to the final shot. Now right click, time and choose enable time remapping. So here we have got the initial and the last point of the clip. Now press page down button to go to the next frame and apply a keyframe. Until here I want to speed up. So I'll just apply another keyframe here and to fast this part just bring this closer. Great! To slow the next part, just go to the next frame, apply a keyframe and till here I want to slow down. So I'll apply another keyframe and to slow down, just take this keyframe and bring this forward. And similarly, we'll slow and fast this clip as per requirement. And after applying the sound effect, let's have a preview of this shot. Perfect shot! And I hope you guys have learned and enjoyed this tutorial. Please give your comments, your suggestions in the comment box. And for updates, please subscribe this channel and stay connected. Until next time, take care.